Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb, and yes, you read that title correctly. In this video, I'm going to go over the step-by-step -step process of how you can become a millionaire with just a dollar a day. And to cut to the chase, the way in which we're going to do this is through real estate investing. So this is how the video is going to work. In just a second, I'm going to put up an Excel document behind me that I made that details every single step, every single property, exactly how all the numbers work, and it shows you kind of year by year exactly how you will become a millionaire with just a dollar a day and no more and no less. So let's get into it. This is going to be a lot of fun to make. I had a lot of fun just making this Excel and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So let's jump into it and let's learn how you can become a millionaire with just a dollar a day. Let's do this. All right, so here we are. We've made it to the Excel that I made. And if you see me looking down, that's just because my computer is down here and I got to look down to show you guys what I'm talking about. But all right, so just to prove what you're kind of going to learn here, if we scroll to the bottom right here, you'll see that the net worth, at least in equity of these properties, is $1.2 million and the cash flow is $4,400. So you can see right there that this works. You got a million dollars in the end and this is all just off of a dollar a day. So let's head all the way back up the top and let's learn exactly how you get to that over $1 million amount. All right, so the first thing you have to do is start saving money. So what you're going to do is you're going to save every single dollar from every single day. And you're not just going to go throw it in a bank account. No, you are going to invest that money. So in this example, we're going to be investing that money in the S&P 500. So every dollar you save, it gets invested into the S&P 500. So let's put that in here. So we're starting with zero dollars. This is zero to a million dollars. The interest rate, how much it's going to be making every single month is going to be 7%. So 7%, I always say, is the average or my expected return in the stock market year over year. Here are some more numbers to kind of back up that claim. You can see dating all the way back to 1871, it has the return of the stock market, specifically the S&P 500, year over year. So from January 1st, 1871 to December 31st, 2019, I adjusted for inflation, including dividends, and it breaks down the average return and the CAGR, which is the compound annual growth rate, which is just kind of a fancy way of just saying, if you started in 1871 and got to here, this is how much you would have to grow every single year. And that is 7%. And that is the number that I'm using, even though in recent years, it's been closer to 10% if you look at around the 50 year average. And in the past few years, it's been crazy. It's been 15, 20%. It's been absolutely absurd. But 7% is what we're going with. So now we can jump back here. We've got 7%. We're going to calculate it just for now. We'll do 25 years. We'll stop earlier. I just want to look at the full time span. It's going to be compounded monthly. And our monthly deposit is going to be $30. $1 every single month, about $30 every single month. And calculate. So here we are. Here are the results. You can see our yearly deposit is $360. That makes sense. $30 a month times 12 is $360. You can see our year's interest, how much we're making every single year, total deposit, total interest, and our balance. This is one of my favorite calculator sites. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you guys want to go and check out and play with it like I do because I'm just a finance nerd like that. That. But we'll see here. The goal here is I want to raise $10,000. So that's kind of my bar of what I'm setting it at of that's what I want to hit. So we see here at year 16, we make $10,000. So that 10,629 is what we're going to be starting with. So let's now go and pump that into our Excel. All right, so here we are back at the Excel. And here is our $10,000 number that we got after 16 years. And with that, because we invested in the stock market, we made $4,869.69. And you will be taxed on that. When you do sell your stock, you are taxed. However, we're going to do long-term capital gains, and this is going to be 15%. So you're going to pay 15% on that, and you end up paying $730.45. And the amount left over is $9,899.24. And that is the money that we're going to take and go invest into a property. All right, so let's get our first property. So we're going to use that $9,000, and that is going to be a 20% down payment for a $49,000 property. You can take that amount, multiply it by 5 because it's 20%, and you get the total value of the property. You can subtract that total value of the property, subtract it by what we put down, 
and you will get this 39,000 number. Now it may seem crazy, you know, $49,000 for a property here in Southern California. That seems like a crazy high number, but if you look at other places in the United States, that isn't such a crazy number. You can look in more rural cities, smaller cities, and just cities that have cheaper housing prices. So that is a possible number. And now we move on to cash on cash return. And this is something that I had to think quite a bit about. So firstly, what is cash on cash return? Well, when someone says cash on cash return, they're talking about the amount of money they're getting back every single year based on the amount they put in. So suppose I invested $100 and then I got back $10 that year. I would say my cash on cash return was 10%. And that's how kind of properties are looked at. They're looked at on the basis of cash on cash return. You know, how much money is this property bringing in every year? And that's how you can like estimate cash flow and stuff. So let me kind of explain this 12% number because that's important. This number wasn't pulled out of thin air, but it kind of was hard to find because everyone has different cash on cash returns, different people have different investing strategies, and it's a little complex. But I looked at trying to find what the average return was. We can see here, this is according to Mashvisor, that generally the average rate of return on investment is anything above 15%. And I've seen certainly less, you know, some people are getting 10%, 5%, depending on your market. Whereas it says here that well, other investors wouldn't even like get out of bed unless they were promised a 20% return on investment. So you can see it does vary. So I was thinking, all right, 15% return is what we can go with. And I like to deal with a lot of finances after taxes. So I was thinking, all right, we'll bump it down to 12%. That can kind of be the after tax amount. And the great thing with real estate is you get a lot of tax benefits with it, but that is a whole nother video. So 12% is the number that I went with and that's kind of what we run with here on out. So a 12% cash on cash return on these properties. So let's head back to the Excel. So I took that 12%, which means every year we're gonna make $1,187.91. I then divided that by 12 to get our monthly amount that we've got coming in every single month. And you can see it's $98.99. So now, how much are we making every single month? Well, we've got that $98.99 plus the $30 that you're still putting in every single month because we're still investing that $1 every single month. So now you can go in and you're gonna be investing $128.99. So we now gotta jump back to our compound interest calculator because you are now gonna be taking that amount and investing that in the stock market. All right, so here we are back at the compound interest calculator and we're now gonna change this amount because it's no longer 30 we now got to add in that $98.99 that you're making every single month, which brought us to $128.99. And I can now click calculate. And we have our results here, our new yearly deposits, yearly interest rate, total interest, and balance. So again, I want to look for when I am over $10,000. And it looks like after six years here, I now have $11,567.96. And you can see the total interest we've accumulated is $2,200, just over that, the year interest. So now we can take this number and pump that back into our Excel. All right, so we're back at the Excel. You can now see that $11,567.96. And as we did say, it was after six years. So you can see this was year 16. And then six years, 16 plus six is 22. And we did talk about how you were making $2,280.68 in profit off of that interest that we saw. So again, you are taxed. Uncle Sam needs his money. So 15%, that means the amount you are taxed is $342.10. And the amount left over that you have to invest is just over $11,000. So now, we can take that $11,000 and we can invest that into a property. So you can see here, our second property now, we're gonna take all that money and we're gonna, that's gonna be our down payment. You know, now we're gonna multiply that by five, we get the total property cost, 20% if you want the total value, multiply by five. And you can see now we have the mortgage amount taken, you saw this in the first property. And now our 12% return is gonna bring us that much every single year, divide that by 12, and we get this is how much more we're making every single month. Now we are going to go and calculate how much we're making every single month now because we're taking this 128 here that we get from our first property. Now adding this new 112 
plus the $30 that you are still investing every single month. We're still keeping up that $1 every single month. And we end at $241.25. So now, you're probably getting the hang of this. We can now go back to the compound interest calculator and pump that number in. All right, so we're back at the compound interest calculator. You know, we're starting at zero again, 7% interest rate. We'll keep doing 25 years, that doesn't really matter. And we can type in that 241.25. And click Calculate. And then down here, we'll see when do we cross that $10,000 mark. And we see right here, it makes a pretty big jump. We're pretty close at year three, but then at year four, we hit that $13,396.92 with almost $2,000 worth of interest, 1.8K. So let's take that number now and let's input that back into our Excel spreadsheet. So here we are, it's now year 26. You know, we did 22 plus four because it took four years to get that amount. And we've done this before. This is probably now seeming somewhat boring, but it is very, very important, I must add. You know, you made that much in profit, 15% of that, that's how much you're paying in taxes, that's how much you have left over. I will speed up a little bit, I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. I won't keep going back and forth to that compound interest calculator, I'm just hoping you now kind of trust me on that fact. So, that's what we're going to go off of. You can now buy your third property, that much down, multiply that by 5, and that's how much your loan's going to be underneath that once you subtract how much you put down, this is your 12% cash on cash return. Divide that by 12 to get the monthly return that you are getting, your monthly cash flow. And after that, you will then be making this much every single month. So that's great. I'm not going to keep going back and forth, as I said, to the compound interest calculator. So you're just going to have to believe me that after three years, you have that much money. That's how much you made. You're going to pay your taxes and you're going to give some money to Uncle Sam. And that's how much you do pay in taxes. That now is how much you have left over. You can now buy your fourth property. It's now going to be that much down, that much in return, and you're going to take out that much of a mortgage, your cash and cash return, that amount. So now, with just a dollar every single month, you're now making $519.77. And now, this is when things get interesting. This is when it's time to kind of take this to a new level. We're going to add in a new strategy here, a refinance, and hopefully you kind of stay along here. If things seem complicated here, I know some people may not understand real estate investing or all this may seem new, a little overwhelming. That's okay. I was once new to real estate investing. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below or check out any of my other real estate videos on here. So that's just kind of a side note, but now let's kind of get a little net worth update and let's just kind of see where we're at now because we want to see how much money we actually have now that it's been a good number of years. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We now have four properties that we've bought and here next to it I have the years that I've owned them. This is zero because we bought that this year technically in year 29. So this was the home value when I bought it and I'm gonna say value now, I'm increasing the kind of property's value at 4.5% every single year. Now, I did not pull that number out of thin air either. Let me quickly show you where I got that from. I used a couple different sources. This one was from fool.com saying that they went between 3% and 5%. And there's a couple other websites that were saying higher around 6 to 7%. It's hard because it really depends where you are. Here in Southern California, prices have just skyrocketed, whereas other places in the United States, things are a little bit more stagnant. But 5%, I felt, was a somewhat conservative uh, way of approaching this, but it really varies depending on where you are. So that's kind of where I got my 4.5% from. So that's what we've been going with. So right here we see the mortgage amount at purchase, $39,596.95. And after 13 years, we have this much left in the property. And the way you can see this, how much you have left is through an amortization table, which shows over time how much you are paying off of your property, oftentimes including principal and interest and different things like that. So you can go to any other amortization calculator. This is one that I found that I quite like and you input all your information up here, so the 39,000 up there, we're doing 30 year loans and we're running it at 4.5% interest rate since that is around the going rate. Actually right now it is a little bit lower. We are at crazy low times when it comes to interest rates and that again is a conversation for another day but it's another interesting conversation at that. So you can go here 
And as we said, let's pretend we bought this in February of 2020. So you can now jump and go 13 years. So 2020 would bring us to 2033 if you add three years. So 2033 is right here. February of 2033. It's going to be the rest of, of our balance is $28,476. That's how much we have left on our balance. So we can look here. That's what I inputted there. In order now to get our equity that we have in the property, you take your value that the property is at, subtract it by the debt you still have on it, meaning this mortgage amount, and that is our equity. And I did that for every single one. I did the 4.5%, what the value is now, versus how much we had a mortgage at person, sorry, not minus that, but you're then gonna look at how much is left. I looked at the amortization table for every single one of these properties. I will not take your time uh, showing you every single one. As you can see, this Excel document, it took me all day. I probably spent about, about almost seven hours on this, but I, I loved it. So I'm, I'm just really kind of weird about that kind of thing, but I, I, I love making Excel documents, but let's, let's get back into this. So subtract that amount. You now have your equity and this is how much equity you have in each of those kind of four properties there. As you can see here, you have the same, almost the same mortgage amount. You do have the same because we just bought this. You haven't really had time to pay it off yet. So that's the equity you have. If you move down here, I, we're now going to refinance properties one through three. Now, Refinancing is kind of a strange term if you like haven't heard of it before, but I want to explain it very simply. And if it seems confusing, feel free to ask me questions or you can look it up and I'm, there's a bunch of articles on it. But essentially what happens is you start paying off your house and you start building equity in it. You know, what happens when you pay off your house and you now have a lot of money in there? Well, sometimes people want to take some of that money out. And oftentimes people think, well, then don't you have to sell the house if you want the money? No, there's actually things like a refinance there's also other things like HELOCs and everything like that, but I, I won't get into that. But you can take that money out and then you can go and invest it. So what we're doing is we're tapping into that equity. So what you do is you go to a bank and you say, hey, this is how much my home is now worth. And they'll give you a new loan at 80% usually. It's known as the loan to value, LTV amount, around 80%. So you take out a new loan for that. And then what you should do is take that amount and pay off that first mortgage. So that's exactly what we did here. We have the home value. The new mortgage amount is going to be this amount multiplied by 0.8, meaning you're leaving 20% equity. The banks like to see that you leave at least 20% equity in there or around there. Some banks are less, some are more. And now the after paying off your old mortgage, how much cash you have because you took it out and you paid off your first mortgage. So here we got $70,000 of equity out. We still got to pay off what is left. So we end up with this amount and you do that for each one. And you have the amount of equity still in the deal, that 20%. And our new yearly cash on cash return. This is also something that I think I wanted to do the refinance for a number of reasons. Firstly, to tap into that equity because that's what I would do and it can kind of speed up this process. It gives us more money to invest. But also, doing a new 12% gives us a new monthly amount and that is something that I think is taking into consideration. You know, over this amount of time, rent will go up. But this, of course, again, can show how conservative this is because this means after when we first started at year 16, it's been, what, 13 years and we're just now having our first kind of rent bump almost. So this shows that this, again, is pretty conservative. So and it just goes to show how much money you really can be making from this. You know, if you're bumping rents, if you're keeping them competitive. But of course, this is a short video and I couldn't take into consideration every single possibility. That would be an insane Excel document. But now you can see we have that amount. So now we calculated a few other things here. The important thing now here is the amount we now have from all the cash out refinances, 75,000. A beautiful thing about cash out refinances is you don't actually have to pay taxes on it, which is amazing. Whereas if you sell your house, you actually, of course, have to pay taxes on that. Although I know, I feel like everything I say, there's like a, but there are things like 1031 exchanges, but I don't want to get into that. Again, I feel like I'm saying this a lot, a video for another day, but all right. So the net worth, you're now at $138,000. Your monthly cash flow is $1,001.18. And it ha 
I added these two numbers just to kind of show you the power of this. Had you just been taking a dollar a day and throwing it into a savings account, you would have $10,440. That is nothing compared to this net worth that you now have. And Another thing I wanted to show is that had you taken that dollar a day and just invested that in the stock market, getting 7%, you'd only have $33,000. So that shows that real estate is kicking butt and beating everyone else. You know, it's beating the stock market. It's beating, of course, the savings account. But if you see other videos like how to become a millionaire off of like $5 a day, $10 a day, they're just investing it usually in the stock market right here at 7% or so. And as you can see, they're falling pretty behind when it comes to this real estate state machine that we've been kicking in gear. So $138,000 is what we've got now. And we can now take this $75,000 that we now have from our cash out refinances. And we can take that and invest that in a property. So we can now invest that in our fifth property that we're going to be buying. This is how much we're going to be putting down 20% multiply that by five, $376,000 the type is the price of the property. You can see these properties are getting more and more expensive. So now, you know, we started with that like $50,000 property. Now we're getting into larger properties, you know, duplexes and different things like that. So it's pretty cool. And you can get into new markets. So the properties are getting more expensive, which is great you know we're taking out leverage and we're now making more 12 percent of that is just under ten thousand dollars here nine thousand thirty nine fifty seven cents that's twelve percent of that and divide that by twelve to get our monthly cash flow there seven fifty three so now if you add everything together we're now making one thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars off of just our monthly cash flow from all of our properties you can now see our bigger property here that's 753 how big of a percentage how much that makes up our new cash flow so you can see that we're really starting to speed things up here so now we can take that of course you're going to invest in the stock market again and the cool thing here is now we're buying a new property every single year. So before it was this weight of 16, then the 22, then the 26, then the 29, there were gaps. But now from here on out until you're a millionaire, you're going to buy a new property every single year because you have enough money now to buy one every single year. So that just goes to show how powerful this is. So yes, we're buying a new place at year 30. This is how much you put in the stock market. This is how much you made in interest. 15%, that's how much you're paying, and that's how much you have left over. So you can now go buy your sixth property, go through all this information here. This is the information for the sixth property, and that's how much you're now gonna be making every single month. This is how much it was added to it. You can see this property is a lot less. That's because a lot of our money went into this refinance up here, and now we didn't refinance again off of after year 30. So a little bit lower, but then you can still buy a property the next year. Again, all the same information. This is how much money you put in the stock market. That's how much you made. You're paying Uncle Sam. That's how much you paid him. And lastly, that's how much we have. You're buying your seventh, or yeah, your seventh property right there. 32, you're doing that same thing again. And keep in mind, you know, this seems like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. But think, this is just once a year. And once you get one, you're gonna start building the network, building the connections. You're gonna have deals coming to you all the time and you are gonna become a pro at this. And this is something that I'm really excited for. You know, I'm working on, getting my first investment property. And that's something that of course I'm saving for and trying to get under my belt and just really trying to make it happen in the next few years. But you can start to see like once, they always say the first one's the hardest. <laughs> so that's something that I definitely hold very true because it certainly is tough. And you guys are seeing me work through mine. And if you wanna see how I'm doing on it, of course, keep up with my YouTube channel because I'm always sharing my experiences and I'm taking you guys with the whole journey with me. So. Let's get back to this. So we're buying our eighth property, the same deal. And then we're now making just under $2,000 every single month there, which is not bad. And we're doing the same thing, year 33. You guys starting to see a trend here. <laughs> and we're now making this amount every single month, doing the same thing and putting that in the stock market. That's where we're paying. Uncle Sam's taking a little bit of money. And lastly, that's how much we have. Invest it. And we're now making 2,400. Do the same thing again for year 35, year 36. If you guys want, you can check any of my numbers here, just going and simply going into that compound interest calculator and seeing, making sure these numbers are right. And maybe you guys are in different tax brackets, but 15% is what I did like in general, long-term capital gains. I'm expecting you to sell it after one year. So you, this everything is kind of on a tight timetable here, but after one year. So we're now buying our 12th property. You're really starting to, rake in these properties here. 
you're 37. And then when I told myself, because I was thinking about this just in my head, calculating like equity numbers, appreciation, I was like, you know, we might be close to a million dollars. So I went and checked it. Here were those first three year, those first three properties that we refinanced earlier. It's been eight years since the refinance. That was the amount. And this is how much the property is now. Again, moving at that four and a half percent growth. The mortgage at the refinance, the amount left on the mortgage, the equity that I now have in the property. And as you just saw in this last little stint we just went over, we just bought a whole lot of properties here. It looks like, yeah, we bought nine properties, four through 13. This is the year since we bought them. And you can see the property value when we purchased them, the property value now running at four and a half percent. And the mortgage amount at purchase, the amount left on the mortgage, I checked all of these were the amortization table. Again, if you like, you can go back and check my work. And lastly, this is how much equity we have. So I calculated all up, total net worth, and then we got $934,900.45. And part of me when I calculated this, I was like, oh, we're so close. Because I was like, in my head, I'm like, we're almost there. And this, took, this takes a lot of time. Keep in mind, I had to go through every single amortization table through the time and take the compound interest amount, getting that new amount, it, it took a while. So I was a little bummed when I got there, but I was like, we're close, that, that's a good sign. So now we are at that amount. Our cash flow every single month is $3,500, just over that. And then again, I added those two things. Had you just been saving a dollar a day, you would be at $13,000. And if you invested that just in the stock market at 7%, that's $63,000. So you can see both of those are a ton below our new total net worth. And yep, that's a spelling error, but okay. And they are well below. So you can just see real estate is so far ahead, so much more powerful than any of those other investments. Is it harder? Yes. Is it going to take a lot more work? And of course, you can invest in the stock market in the next hour if you wanted to. But this, this, is, this is some serious money we're bringing in. So as I said, we're trying to get to a million dollars here. So I added this new amount, year 38. And I said, I think all we need is just one more year, one more property, because everything was starting to really bring it in. So here we go. We've got one more year here. And that's how much we put in the stock market. And again, I should add, you could have refinanced here. After this eight years and the eight years since with the refinance and since some of these older properties, you could have refinanced again, taken some more money out and invested that bottom more expensive property. But I knew that we were so close to a million dollars that it wasn't worth it. And at least for the purposes of this video, I mean, had I been refinancing diligently right when I could, or I felt it was necessary to, I easily could have refinanced way back here and it probably would have been faster. So in reality, you probably would have made that $1 million quite a bit faster. So um, but in this case, again, being more conservative with my numbers. So I went one more year because I wanted to hit that million dollar mark. And that's how much the property was. Or sorry, that's how much the stock was. That's how much we made. You're paying Uncle Sam. That's how much you pay him. And that's what it is. Or that's the, the total amount left over to invest. Boom, boom, boom. 20% down. Multiply by five. That's our property value. $218,000. And the mortgage amount. Again, we're doing the cash on cash return. $5,000. 436 $436 in cash flow, bringing us our new monthly amount of just under $4,000 every single month, and that's pretty good. So now, I checked it again at year 38 after one year. Here we go. I did all the same work that we've been talking about before with the new home values at year 39 here, considering like since the refinance, you can see now right here, the refinance is nine years away. And we can go all the way over here, the equity in the property. And these are all these other properties we have here. Since the uh, since purchase, home value then, property value now, mortgage price, and mortgage amount left on the mortgage. Again, all of these being checked with that amortization table. How much we have left. So I added all of that up, meaning all of our equity that has been put in the property, and boom, we are now over a million dollars, you now adding all that equity up together, you are a millionaire with just a dollar a day. So after, what is this, 38 years, you now have a million dollars, you've got just under $4,000 worth of cash flow, and the amount you saved every single day is this much, and 
or, sorry, had you just done a dollar a day, you'd only have $13,000. So we're out here because we invest in real estate, we've got a million dollars. And had you just put that, thrown that in a bank account, all you would have is $13,000. And had you invested in the stock market, you'd have $36,000. And this is something that I wanted to show because I wanted to show the speed of this, the speed at which you're making money here. So from year 37 to 38, we made $153,000. So this is something that's crazy. You know, we started out with just a dollar a day, not making anything, not making anything. And this real estate machine starts to speed up and get faster and faster and faster and faster. And in just one year, this is what was pretty cool. I was kind of glad I did it in those increments. And we made $153,000. And this is something that, just what we made in one year is way more than had you been investing 7% all along versus, of course, just a dollar a day. But look at that amount. It is well over $100,000 more than had you just invested in the stock market. And that's how much you made. And it's, it's crazy when you think about how powerful that is. And this, the whole system just started with a dollar a day. And because me, I just wanted to keep going. So... I believe I did one more. Uh, year 39, we again brought the property 10 years away. Again, I could be refinancing it. I could be refinanced a while ago, could have more, and th this could be done a lot faster, but uh, that would have been a much bigger Excel and probably taken me a couple days, if I'm being honest. And so here I did the same thing. You guys have seen this before, running it always at a 4.5% interest rate, equity in the property, and then again, property value now, and here's the equity in the property. And you can see, we're now at $1.2 million. So we were at just over a million here, and then we're now at 1.2, gaining $169,000, which is more than what we had made in the prior year where we did 153. So this is really, really starting to speed up. And this is where I ended it. So right here, you can see, it has been 39 years, and we have $1.2 million 4.4K, $4,446.08 uh, coming in cash flow every single month. Had you just invested that, you'd be at 14,000. Had you invested in that stock market, which everyone says, you know, when they're talking about Roth IRAs and stuff, 73,000. And this is how much you made in one year. It is more than you could add both of those together and you're still well under that 169. So this just goes to show the power in like the dominance of real estate. It is unbelievable. So from this, you can see the power of real estate and what it can really do for you. You know, after 39 years, $1.2 million. And what's great is this all started with just a dollar a day. And I know you may be saying like, Calvin, that's 39 years away. That is a long ways away. And that's true. But keep in mind, this was just a dollar a day. I mean, in 39 years, I would be 60 years old. I'm 21 right now, 21 plus 39 is 60. But if you did more, think about it if you did $2 a day, $3, $5, $10, you could really speed this up and you can do it so much faster. I just wanted to show that this is possible with just a dollar a day. And it's just unbelievable when you really think about it. So with all this being said, there are a few things that I want to say because you can nitpick this. And this is one thing that I really struggle with was, you know, finding numbers. You know, I did have to make a lot of guesses, you know, guessing 12%. You're not always going to get 12% of course and there's also things that are somewhat unrealistic in the sense that every single year you're not going to be able to perfectly find a property that is a you have enough money 20% to get that total value up perfectly you know it's perfectly five times your amounts now that's probably never gonna happen and so that is something that is rather unrealistic there but maybe maybe you can't get that much or maybe it's a little more and then you have your salary kick in keep in mind guys this is just a dollar a day this is nothing you are still making your normal salary and different things like that and that's another thing I want to touch on there are other expenses that will inevitably come up with these properties you know I that 12% does try to keep into consideration things like capex capital expenditures and other things that you would spend on normal 
like property management and different things like that. Just normal upkeep of a property, you know, some roofs break and at the end here you have 15 properties. There are things going to be going wrong. So the, the idea here was just to show the cash flow, but all other kind of expenses, I would just say like, okay, maybe your salary can cover that. So just be saving more, but I know this is an idealized version and I know it's easy to nitpick, but the whole idea here was not to show you and promise you that at your 39 you will have one million two hundred fifty eight thousand three hundred and three dollars and twenty six cents no it wasn't necessarily to show you that it was to show you the power of real estate and that you don't need much to get started and that you know it Making a million dollars seems so crazy. It seems like so much money, but if you really break it down and go step by step, it is a process, you know, and some people will see that 39 years and just get scared away and that's okay. But if you're willing to kind of tough it out, put in the work, real estate is not easy. And I've learned that as I've started to get into it. And I mean, that being said, it is possible though. So this just goes to show that anyone can do this, can get this 1.2 amount. So that will kind of wrap it up. I, again, don't want to take too much of your guys' time, but I would just love to know what your thoughts are on this. You know, if there's anything, I, of course, like maybe I made a glaring mistake, you know, let me know down there as well. I really enjoy talking about this and all the links for things that I talked about will be in the description below. But if you have any questions, you know, maybe something didn't make sense. Maybe the refinance is still a little iffy or just something isn't making sense. I am really passionate about this stuff. So I look forward to talking to you guys down there about that, but that will wrap it up. And if you guys are new here, my name is Calvin Rabb and here I make videos all about personal finance. I have new videos coming out all the time, every Monday, every Friday, and sometimes I post on Wednesday as well. And they're all videos kind of like this, you know, about growing your wealth because that's something that I'm very passionate about because I have this crazy idea that personal finance can be fun. So without any further ado, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'm wishing you all the best. So if you've made it this far, thank you. It's awesome. So thanks so much. And as always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm going to move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you are going to see my most recent video. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you're going to see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb, and I'll see you soon.